dirty now, like there is no life. But you're going to see that pretty soon, when the sun hits it, there's going to be life and green everywhere that the earth needs. So like that, with our work, everything that we're going to start doing that is going to be um, important is going to begin with difficulty. Not much to look at. It may even be dirty. But the results now, it is going to help you and help others. So this Allah is showing to us. And especially in this month of Rajab, in this year, Rajab falling around the time of spring, no? We get a different kind of blessing now. It's one of the secrets why the Islamic months is moving 10 days earlier every time. So when it moves like that, you can get the feeling of those holy months distributed throughout entire time, entire calendar, entire uh, season. So the seasons that time, they won't even have any chance to complain to Allah saying, your holy month, you only put it in the springtime. Now, what about summertime? What about winter? What about fall? All the seasons, Allah is being just, saying, it is there. They can all partake from that mercy. And the people, believers, will understand the different blessings that comes. Because the blessing of Allah is not just one, and it's the same. Every time it is changing. Every time it is beautiful. Every day it is different. Inshallah, we'll be able to understand this and to look. That's why the prophets and the awliya Allah, they're saying, everywhere you turn, you see the signs of Allah. But you have to be busy with that a little bit. Look to see how much of your faith you have. How much are your thoughts with remembering and thanking your Lord. How much of your thoughts through seeing the blessings that he is sending and the lessons that we have to learn from everything that is around us. You don't have to make too much worship that time because when you are understanding and seeing and learning and you're remembering that time, that is worship. That is a zikr that you are doing. And you are not separating. You're saying, now I'm making zikr, after that my zikr is ending. I don't remember Allah at all, because now I eat. So Allah is not going to be present when I'm eating. Astaghfirullah. Or you say, now I play, Allah is not going to be there. Now I work, Allah. Allah is there. And everything that is coming to us, it is from Him. For a believer with intelligence, he's going to look at this. He's going to sit and he's going to understand. Now, in these days, with technology, they don't even leave you some moment to yourself. Huh? They trick us all. This technology is destroying mankind. It's destroying us. It's making us to be cut off from each other. It's making us to be cut off from this world. It's making us to be cut off from our own emotions. Now, One simple thing, the Holy Prophet said to us, says one simple thing. He says, don't laugh too much. You can laugh, but don't laugh too much because it kills your heart, it deadens your heart. It makes your heart now not to feel the suffering of others, only to find something funny there. So your heart now is only going to find something funny. You see someone dying, you find something funny, you're going to laugh. You see someone suffering, you find something funny to laugh. <laughs> well, these days, Muslims are running top speed. You say, we have stand-up comedians. Why don't we have stand-up comedians too? That you're going to spend one whole hour just laughing and laughing and forgetting about your Lord. Everything that is given to us, everything that is in this world, Allah has not forbidden us in reality. He has not forbidden us. He has only set up some boundaries, some parameters. He's saying now, this boundary makes this thing that is ha halal to stay halal. When there is no boundary for that, 
even if something that is halal, it can become forbidden. He's saying, water is not haram. Hmm? Drink water is good for you. What happens now just with water? What happens when you drink too much water? Huh? You can get poison from the water. There is water poisoning. So everything has to be limited. Now that time that water becomes a poison, it becomes forbidden for you. Everything has a use. Now we cannot take certain things, we cannot consume certain things. But those things, it has its use not in the way that we want, in the way that Allah wants. Which means that what? Now that liquor, it is not meant for you to drink. It is meant for to clean from the outside, not from the inside, it kills. Now, now Muslims are believing a little bit. Why? Because science is just proving so many things that Allah and His Prophet had said 1400 years ago, saying, don't touch that alcohol. Don't drink it. It is forbidden for you. Because what happens when you do that? It kills. Even a small amount, it kills. And what it kills is very difficult now for the body to generate. And what happens now? What happens when you take that? And what happens when you're not aware? What happens when you're not aware? Your mind is not there, which is what? Which means that your spirit now is being disturbed from inside of you. It is starting to be separated from you. What happens then? Shaitan quickly enters. This is a small thing, but it is a very huge thing. Because just because of that liquor, now we see nations. Nations, they are getting destroyed. Generations, now, they are getting destroyed. Correct or not? Just from that liquor. Huh? Does it matter? That liquor is not looking to say, okay, I only favor white people, not black, black people, not Pakistani, Turkish people, not so. No, everything, everyone. You're taking that and they're pushing it to you. Now the man who has intelligence, the woman who has intelligence and care, he forgets. Now that liquor will open the doors to so many other forbidden things. That you start taking. After a while, you don't feel the effect anymore and you say, I must chase higher go higher and higher, and it's not going to stop until you completely destroy yourself. But all those things, they have different uses, but it's not made for us to be consumed the way that our ego wants it to be. In this holy month, we should be careful a little bit, and to think a little bit, pull ourselves back, spend less time on that fitna Facebook, spend less time looking and just doing that, you know how it is. It starts to hit your heart. You start to feel anxious. You start to, like, there is nothing there, but you cannot stop. Stop all that. Say to yourself, I'm not going to. In this time, I'm not. Whatever is necessary, I'm going to do. We need any more headlines to show us that all these things are bad for us, bad for our children, that our children, they can get addicted to that technology more than they get. The same way the, the brain functions to that technology, to Facebook and to the internet, is the same way the brain reacts to heroin and drugs. For children, their minds, they're not set yet. It's being molded. Until you're a teenager, it's being molded. So however you mold, that's how it's going to stay. You understand? That time, by the time he reaches to an age where he realizes certain things he has to change, it's already molded like that. It's so difficult now to bring it out and to bring it back. Who are raising children these days? They don't teach us how to. They say, you must have fun. They're saying to the women, don't raise your children. You are free. You must have fun. And you are strong, you are confident. Whatever that your ego wants, you must run after but it is also against the nature of a woman. Yes, it is against their nature. Because once you feel that life that is inside of you, your whole life has changed. It's not the same. Once that life comes out, your whole life is upside down, but you love it. Because now, 
there is a bond. You understand this feeling I can get, no one else, not even half of the human race, the men, can feel that kind of feeling. So we need to go back to what our prophets, what are the holy ones they are teaching us. Because his modern life, it is killing us. Take from it what is necessary. Whatever that is not, now we should leave. Especially in this month, we should leave and take some time to just sit and think. Think. Feel free to think. It's free. So many things are stopping you to think. Don't. Because there are so many times Allah is saying in the Holy Quran, think. Why don't you think? You must think. Islam, it is a religion for those who think. Inshallah, we should use that thinking because these are the days that more blessings is coming into this world. We should take this opportunity to pull back a little bit and to sit and to be quiet a little bit and to think. Don't worry, you're not going to lose anything. You're going to gain so much. Sit and watch. Especially for us, we're pulling ourselves to the top of this mountain. Especially those who are living at the Dargah to say, I want to leave all of that. I've done already all that city thing. I've done all that teeny. I've done running around in Alphabet City, huh? You know? Uh, uh, for some of us running around Harlem. <laughs> I lived there for ten years. I I cannot run around too much there. Although they like me, I like them too. But we have enough. Enough of that. Enough of this now we're pulling ourselves. The simple life means that our lifestyle is simpler, but the activities that is happening in our heart and in our minds is going to get more uh, interesting. It's going to make us to become more alive because you become more awake. Why are you doing? Who are you doing it with? What is the reason, inshallah? May Allah keep us in safety. Wa min Allahu tawfiq al-fatiha.